looking at three kind of forms of the same equation. All right? We have this vector equation. In general form here, it's this r plus a, or r equals a plus tb. But then we saw that we could also see this in component form, component vector form. And then we could also rewrite that component vector form in terms of parametric equations. And we saw also that this applies when there are three uh, dimensions as well. If we have an x, y, and z, it just adds that z component to each of these parts. Okay. So what I want to look at today is a little bit about um, intersections of lines and remembering that we're talking about things in motion. Okay. We're talking about things in motion. So um, there's a couple of things that we're going to consider just today. First of all, uh, one thing that we mentioned earlier but didn't really do was find the angle between lines. And I also want to distinguish in that um, the angle between the paths of objects that are moving versus just finding the angle between two random lines. Okay, and really it's just a matter of making sure that you understand what a problem is asking you for, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to look and determine do two lines actually intersect? If so, where? And Given that the paths intersect, do the objects that are moving along those paths actually meet? So there's really kind of three questions in there that we're going to consider. Okay? But let's start first of all with the angle between two lines. Okay? Here I have two lines, line R and line S. And they're in three dimensions with those parameters for time, okay? And given that we struggled in the last couple of quizzes and tests, we're not going to be distracted. We're going to actually focus on what's going on, right? So we don't make the same mistakes again. When we are asked for the angle between two lines, Obviously, from your knowledge of geometry, you know that when two lines intersect, we have one acute angle and one obtuse angle, unless, of course, they're perpendicular, then you have all 90 degree angles. But if you're simply asked for the angle between two random lines, then we're looking for the acute angle. Okay? We'll always give the acute angle. If, however, you're talking about two objects that are traveling along a path, Okay, and you're asked, hey, what's the angle between their paths of motion? Then you would do whatever that angle is based on the direction they're going. Okay, so when you're asked for the angle between two lines, as we'll see in this example, you may have to interpret the res results a little bit. Okay, now. In order to have an angle between two lines, the two lines have to intersect, okay? Now, we don't know right now whether or not these two lines intersect. We know they're not parallel because their direction vectors aren't multiples of each other or opposites or whatever. However, since we're in three dimensions, they could be skew, right? They're not intersecting, but they're not parallel either. Um, for now, we'll just assume that they do intersect, and let's find the angle, okay? The formula that we know for the angle between two vectors is cosine of theta equals u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Now, notice here, to find the angle between these two lines, really all I care about is the direction vectors or these velocity vectors? Okay, you could call uh, right. this. That's an S. 
Notice I'm using two different parameters for time. No, it's time and time. It's just I don't want to assume that these guys are going to have the same times. Okay? And that actually is an important distinction you need to make. If you're ever working on a problem where you've got two different lines, make sure you use two different parameters so you don't make some faulty assumptions. If, if you wanted to do T1 and T2, you could do that as well. But that makes more sense. So that, T, that S has nothing to do with vector S? No, it's just the time of vector S. Okay? You could put in whatever you want. Again, you could, if you, if you wanted, we could even do this, you know. Oh, we can't because I locked it. But anyways, we could make that T1 and T2, all right? We won't for right now. So what is the velocity vector or the direction vector for vector R? See the equation here. Let's think back. We got to know these forms, right? Okay. Your vector equation, your vector equals, what does A stand for? Yeah, that's your position at time zero, okay? Your x sub naught, y sub naught is your a. Oh, Okay? Yeah, and think about it, guys. Your velocity is going to take you so far every unit of time, right? So it's got to be related to the time. So notice, whatever the vector is multiplied by the t is going to be your velocity vector. Okay, so that's velocity, T is obviously time, A is your starting position. Okay, so here, what's our velocity for vector R? Negative 2, 3, 1. Negative 2, 3, 1, okay. Negative 2, 3, 1 is that velocity. Okay. So the, so the velocity vectors are what we use for this equation? Yes. We actually don't care where they start. All we care about is which direction they're going. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have negative 2, 3, 1. Um, we could call that our vector u. Doesn't matter what you call it. But then, for the sake of our uh, formula here, our vector v would be the velocity of uh, line s. Why are we just ignoring the first big point? Because where you start really doesn't have anything to do with what direction you're going. So we don't really need them. Not right now. Later, we'll use them when we determine do these lines cross? And do the objects actually meet? So it's basically the same process as an angle between two vectors. Yes. Yeah, you just have to pick out the right vectors. So what, what is our velocity vector for vector S? 1, negative 4, and 5. Yeah, 1, negative 4, and 5. Okay? So now you guys have learned how to find magnitude, you've learned how to find the dot product, right? So, let's work our way through the formula here, okay? I want to find u dot v. Two times one. Good. One. Plus three times negative four. Good. Five. Good. So, we've got a negative two minus twelve plus five. Negative 9. So I know that the cosine of this angle 
is going to be negative 9 over something. Now we need our magnitudes. Okay? Square root. Okay, square root of the negative 2 squared is 4. The 3 squared obviously is 9. And then plus the 1 squared is 1. So the magnitude of u is square root of 14. So we're going to plug it in up here. One thing I will say, all right, do not round until you get to the end of a problem. Okay, some of you kind of throw yourselves off the answer a bit because you start rounding halfway through a problem. If you have radical 14, leave it as radical 14. Okay? Now, if you've got parts A, B, C in a problem, then obviously you round at the end of part A and then you would use that rounded value in part B or C as needed. Okay? Yes? But yeah, within a part, do not, do not round, okay? All right, so now we need uh, the magnitude of V. What do you guys get for the magnitude of V? Uh, square root of 42. Okay. Oh, but it's um, 1 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 5 squared. Good. And you got square root of 42? Yeah. Okay, good, good. 17 plus 25 would be 42. So we come up here and we get the square root of 42. All right. Any, anyone have any questions on how we set that up so far? All right, good. Now, uh, once we get this, if that's the cosine, how do we get what theta is? Inverse cosine. Inverse cosine, okay? Make sure you hit that second button or use the inverse and not just accidentally use cosine itself. And 111.79 degrees, good. And we would round at this point, okay? We're taking the inverse cosine of that negative 9 over root 14 times root 42, okay? Now, question, is that the angle that they're looking for? If they're asked for the angle between the two lines? Well, this one gets the two. No, it's a two. That's an two. Good. Supplement. Yeah. This, remember, if we're asked for the angle between the two lines, as we are here, we were given the obtuse angle, 111.79. So we would want to use the supplement, so subtract from 180, and we would then get 68.21 degrees. That's the answer we're actually looking for. Okay? Always give the acute angle. Always? When you're asked for the angle between the two lines, yeah. Okay. If we said this guy is traveling this direction, this guy is traveling along this line, what's the angle between their paths? You would just get give whatever you got. Okay. But remember, lines go forever in both directions. Okay. In a real situation, if you had a starting point and you were going this way, and you had a starting point and you were going this way, and you got 111.79, that is the angle between their paths. You see the difference here? As opposed to, we just have these two lines that go forever in both directions, so we're just going to, by definition, give the acute angle. Okay? It's a fine point, but just, just be careful. Okay, so at this point, we know how to find the angle between two lines, and we just assumed that they intersect, okay? 
Let's look at how, though, we could prove that two lines intersect. Now, here we have two lines in two dimensions. How do I know for a fact that those two lines are going to intersect? Without doing anything other than looking at the equations. How do we know that they're going to intersect? Mm -hmm. Because we're in two dimensions. We can do this. You can study each other and see if there's a point where that works. We can. We can. What's the only time two lines don't intersect if we have a parallel? If they're parallel. How do we know these aren't parallel slopes? The slopes, which are the velocity vectors, are different, right? And not only are they different, it still could be parallel if one were a multiple of the other. But these are not multiples of each other, so I know they're not parallel. They're going to intersect somewhere. Those are points, like those are just written in unit vector form or whatever the other form. Like the three on top of the two is just written in a different form. It's a vector, yes. Yeah, but he said that the velocity vector was the slope, but how is that? Well, because what is slope? It's the change in y over the change in x. So is it 3 over 2? No. Where, which one of these is the vertical change? The 2. The 2 is. So it's, two so it's a little three. bit tricky. Yeah, the slope would be 2 thirds for that line. So it's just y over x. Yeah. The change in y over the change in x. The slope here a is a negative 1 fourth. Okay. So so like if um, if the top one was two over eight, then they wouldn't intersect. Uh, yeah. If it were like uh, two over negative eight, then those would be. So we could say that either they don't intersect or they're one right on top of the other. Okay. They're concurrent. Uh, so we we know these ones are going to intersect now it's just a matter of where and that's where what michael said actually comes into play he said let's set these equal to each other in order to determine the point where they intersect if there is one and that's where we can write this equation we want this point to be the same as this point right so let's make them equal let's set this equal to this. All right? Why, why would we do that? Just to... So we want to see where they intersect. Oh. That's how you do it. If they intersect, they're going to be on the same point, so the point is going to be equal. Okay? Now, um, so let's think our way through this. Does everyone see how I set this equation up? I just took the right hand side of line one and put it on one side of the equation. I put line two on the other side. Okay. Is it the form um, x of whatever and then at and then bt? Like, aren't we supposed to multiply oh. at the time? And the you can't. That, remember, that's how we derived what the parametric equations would be. Oh, so that's not actually. Well, we act, what we actually, that's not the form itself, but that actually is a strategy we can use right here. Because take a look. Yeah, we could write this as negative 2 plus 3x, three. Three right? Yeah, and then 1 plus 2x. Yeah. OK. We're going to make a system, you're right, okay? So, check this out. Over here it's going to be 15 minus 4t and 5 plus t, okay? And essentially, guys, what we now have is we can see our parametric equations. For this line, x equals negative 2 plus 3s. And for this line, x equals 15 minus 4t. In order for the lines to intersect, I want the x-coordinates to be the same, 
right? So I could say negative 2 plus 3s has to equal 15 minus 4t. Right? And then likewise, if they're hitting the same point, the y coordinates have to be the same. So y here is 1 plus 2s. The y coordinate here is 5 plus t. I should make that look like a 5 and not an s. There we go. So now you have the option of solving that system however you feel like. Okay. Um, if you wanted, you could multiply this whole second equation by 4. And the reason I would do that is because then my t's would cancel out if I added them together. So negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 3 plus 8, 3s plus 8s would be 11s. 15 plus 20 would be 35. And of course, negative 4t plus 4t would be 0. Right. Now I have an equation with only s's in it. I can solve that for s equals 3. OK? So guess what? I can find the point now. I know these two lines are going to be at the same point when s equals 3. All right? So if s equaled 3, these lines are going to intersect at what point? Where do you plug it in? Oh, would you just put it into the equation? s equals 3. This is my position for line 1, right? Yeah. So, negative 2 plus 3 times 3, 1 plus 2 times 3. So that gives me a position vector of negative 2 plus 9 is 7, and 1 plus 6 is 7. So they're going to intersect at the position 7, 7. Here's a question. How would I be able to tell if the two objects that were traveling along these paths actually met? What? Well, we did set them equal to, to each other, but right now all we've proven is that their paths crossed somewhere. Oh, we want to know where exactly they well, we know that. We know it's at the point 7, 7. What we want to know is, did these two objects collide? It's kind of like you all walked in the door at the beginning of class. All your paths crossed, but thankfully none of you collided. All right? None of you were at, none of you were in the doorway at exactly the same time. So if we want to see if two things actually meet... We want to see if they're in the same place at the same time. Same time. S and T would have to equal the same number. So guess what? We finish solving this system of equations. All right. So if I take if I take this equation here and I plug in S equals three, I have negative two. Well, I know this the left side is going to equal seven. I already figured that out. Right. So 7 equals 15 minus 4t. I subtract 15, and I divide by negative 4, and t equals 2. two. So do they actually meet? No. No. What happens if you do? You just say, like, these are equal. You would say their paths cross and they meet at this point. You know.
Well, they do. The, the paths still keep going. But it's kind of like, you know, we could have an airplane flying along here and we shoot a missile at them like this. Do we hit them? Or does the airplane go past and we miss and it just keeps going that way? You know? In order to actually hit your target, your timing has to be on. So. So it's all about time. Huh? It's all about time. It's all about time. Yep. Have Mr. Gandhi told you that he spent the first semester of college with a number of Yeah. Are we going to be given um, any parametric sets that are services instead of lines? No. So we, we do all first, first degree. So. Now here are the lines that we were dealing with before. So. Remember we found the angle between these so we just kind of assumed that they would work. Okay? What we can do with this is we would again set up systems of equations using the x, the y, and the z components. Now, we're going to have three equations, but we still are only going to have two variables. Okay? So here's what you're going to need to do. You'll solve it just focusing on two of the equations, and all you need to do is when you get to the end, plug your result in and make sure it works for z as well. Okay? Um, you could pick any two of those three equations. All right? So, same process though. So, all right. We'll see you guys have a great day. Um,